Hi, so this is the third video in the Clawbot series, and um, we are going to be making steps three and four of the build instructions for the legacy Clawbot. And so by this point, you should have already made steps one and two, which was setting up your chassis rails with some bearing flats and um, assembling, putting a uh, drive shaft into a motor and giving it a shaft collar. So at this point here, we're going to be taking that motor and shaft collar assembly and putting it through our chassis rail with its own bearing flat and two screws in order to mount that motor. So at first glance, steps three and four look the same, like where they both involve a motor being mounted to a chassis rail. But when you look closely, um, actually the placement of the motors is not the same. So um, this one, this drive, this uh, bearing flat and the motor are going to be kind of closer to the left hand side bearing flat, whereas the other one is closer to the right hand side. So these are really kind of more mirror images than one of one another than duplicates. So we can't just select the entire assembly, copy it and paste it like we did previously with the chassis rails. We have to actually assemble them themselves. So um, we'll get started doing that. So we're going to move back to our Onshape account. And here, let me put this in an isometric view. Um, so this should be what you have um, coming into this video already assembled. So what we're going to do is we are going to need another, uh, each of these, each of these chassis rails is going to need one more bearing flat and we're going to need some screws to attach those motors. So once again, we're going to be using the Automata library. And if you don't remember, this is how we access that. So we're going to go other documents, recently open, most likely it's right there at the top. You're going to click it. And then we need to have a bearing flat. And so that lives in miscellaneous motion. So click there, grab a bearing flat and drop it into our document. We also are going to need to attach it with screws. And so we're going to go into hardware and we're going to find a half inch structural screw. Now, as you're scrolling, you're going to see some motor screws and then you're going to think, Ooh, I should grab that half inch motor screw. Maybe she made a mistake. Um, but don't do that. I mean, we are attaching a motor, so it's very tempting, but these are actually a different diameter screw um, that went to the old styles of motors that Vex used to have, and it won't work on a V5 motor. So don't use that one. We're going to be using an actual structural screw, which is used for pretty much everything these days. Um, and we want the most common size, which is a half inch, this one. So we're going to click it and we're going to bring it in and we can green check that off. And now we're going to do the same process as I showed you before about how to select and you can copy and you can paste. You can actually, um, if you, you didn't see me do it, but I'm doing control C and control V, which is sort of the keyboard shortcuts, which makes this much easier. So there's one, I, I like to separate my uh, screws out a little bit but I want to have four of them total because each of my chassis rails needs a bearing flat and two screws. Okay. So now that we've done that, we're going to learn about how we are going to, well, actually first let's put on the bearing flats and we've done this previously. So I'm going to go a little bit faster because this isn't really new. We're going to be using our fasten mate as usual. I'm going to rotate this a little because I do want the back surface of my bearing flat. I'm going to select that. And then I want to think about where I want to put it. So remember that the first one is towards the left side. So I'm going to skip one hole. And then the next hole is where my bearing flat should start. So it's going to be right here. And it's on the back side. So I'm going to flip it. And that looks good. Green check. We're going to do the same process with the other one. So once again, I'm going to rotate that a bit so that I can easily get to the back. I'm going to zoom in. Um, it's already selected a fasten mate for me. Um, on shapes, always trying to guess what you're doing. And sometimes it's nice and sometimes it's annoying. So now we're going to figure out, we're going to be putting that on this bottom one. Remember with on shape, wherever you place your cursor is where, um, or your, your mouse is where it's going to zoom to. So we're going to skip one hole and then move another. So sometimes you kind of have to reposition your zoom. So I'm going to put it there. Oh, looks like it's on the back flip it over. It looks like it needs to be rotated a bit to get uh, the direction we need. Ah, that looks good. Green check. So we have successfully put on our two new bearing flats. So let's learn about how we are going to attach our motors. So when you are 
let me grab an isometric view so that this is recentered a little bit better. Okay, so when you're trying to attach a motor, um, remember that whenever you're attaching something um, and you're using a fasten mate, you want to try to attach parts that are not moving parts in with that type of a mate. It's like a glued on together. So um, basically, the motor mount is the part that we're going to be using to attach to the back side of our. Um, chassis rails. So let's zoom in on one of our motors here. And then I'm going to change my view a little bit more straight up and down. Because what I want to grab for my first fasten mate is really this outside surface of the motor mount. So that's what I want to select is that outside surface of that motor mount. And once I have that, I'm going to flip it over so that I can... Oh, there we go. We're going to flip this over. And remember, I chose the outside edge surface of my motor mount. So remember that the, that the drive shafts in the, for the positioning we want, the drive shafts are going to be towards the inside. So this is basically where I want that motor mount to be um, mated to right here. So it looks to me like the motor is, needs to be rotated. So I can just rotate it a couple Hmm, that doesn't look right. Maybe it was right to begin with. Sorry. Sometimes it's hard to tell when things are really zoomed in. Let's grab an isometric view. Make sure that that looks like it's in the right place. Oh, yep, looks good. Um, I'm going to move this guy. Actually, I think I'll put, put it over here so it's a little closer to the other motor. Um, so we're going to do the same thing where I'm going to, I already have a fasten mate selected. I'm going to zoom in on this other motor. I'm going to change my... Uh, my view a little bit. So I'm looking straight down on it. I like to choose the outside of the motor mounts, um, the outside one, there's two of them, just because for me, that's easier to remember for placement with the bearing flats. But you know, whatever you prefer. That's the nice thing about CAD is that a lot of it is really um, personal preference, you know, so I'm teaching you the way that I do it. But just remember that if my way doesn't seem logical to you, you are totally welcome to do your way. So I think this one needs to be rotated. Yep, there we go. Looks like it's in a good place now. So put this back in an isometric view and we can see what we've done. Oh, hey, looks great. Looks like our motors are exactly where we want them to be. If I look at this more from a top view, you can see that they're coming through the bearing flats, looking beautiful. So now what we need to do is we need to place our screws in. And so, um, when we put screws in, I'm going to move my, my screws a little closer, um, to, too close to each one, just because this will allow me to do less zooming, which moves things along a little bit faster. Sometimes, um, you know, thinking ahead a little bit, like if you know you're going to have to do something, um, can help a lot. So what I'm going to do first is I am going to if you remember how we put on the um, snap rivets, this is going to be the same basic process. So um, I already have a fasten mate selected. I'm going to select the back side of this screw, like the flat back of the screw head. That's what I want because I'm going to mate that to this flat part of the bearing flat right there. Uh, looks like it needs to be flipped. Beautiful. All right, let's do the other screw. Same deal. I'm going to rotate it so I can get to the back side of that screw head. Select it. And then I'm going to rotate. And I'm going to put that one right here in this hole. Hmm. I think I didn't get the other one. So let's let's get rid of this one. I think somehow my, my, uh, sometimes, you know, Unshape is a browser based program, which is real good sometimes because it lets us use computers that otherwise would not be, uh, appropriate to do CAD on. But, uh, because it's a browser based program, sometimes it's laggy and it doesn't get all of your clicks. So that's why that's what happened to me is I just don't think it got my first mate that I was trying to do. All right. So screws are in, we're going to do the same exact process over here with these screws. I'm going to zoom in going to grab the back side of that screw. Okay, I got it. I'm going to rotate and I'm going to place it right here. I need to flip it. Hmm, looks like it made it to the wrong thing. So I'm going to undo that one. This is very common in CAD. Like you will very, very often have to uh, redo things. So right now it doesn't want, it thinks 
So I think I'm going to undo this entire, uh, this entire mate here because for whatever reason, it still thinks that my screw is there. All right, try this one more time. So um, yeah, like I said, uh, you will often need to zoom way in and you want to make sure that you're getting the surface. Why are you not wanting to select the surface of my bearing flat? Let's see, try this one more time. Hmm. See if I can get it to select the surface of something else. What's going on here? I don't think it's going to mate correctly, but we will see. Oh, hey, that's because my mate's not selected. No wonder it won't get it. <laughs> uh, yeah, so you can see mistakes happen to all of us. Yeah, no wonder it won't mate correctly. That's because you don't have a mate selected. Oy. All right, flip that. Should be a lot easier now. Oh, good to go. Imagine that. Okay, one last one. Gotta laugh at yourself, right? <laughs> okay, should be good. So that completes steps uh, three and four. And as you can see, let's go to an isometric view here. Uh, we now have our motors attached uh, to our chassis rails and we're ready to move on to the next step. So have a great day. Bye.